Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Faith Builders broadcast with Philip and Michelle Steele. We're so excited. Matter of fact, we're overjoyed. We are just marvelously anticipative of what God is going to do today on this broadcast. Yes. Because we are going to share with you the truth of the ever-living, never-changing Word of God. And we're glad that you joined us. And I want you to anticipate change in your life today as we share what God would have us to say to you uh, this morning from the Word of God. We're going to be teaching and dealing with uh, some uh, concepts that Pastor Michelle dealt with in her book, Redeemed and Righteous by Nature. This is the first one in what is going to be a series called Our Being in Christ. And uh, I learned a long time ago that if you read as many books as you can read, especially books that are uh, biblically based, that are telling you who you are in Christ, your life is apt to change at an even greater pace and a greater speed. And so you want to get a hold of this. Of course, the information will be there at the bottom of your screen, and you can write us and request your copy, and uh, we'll be glad to get it to you. And I promise you, it'll change your life because it's the Word of God. Yes. <laughs> and so we're excited about what God's going to do. So let's dig right into this today and see what God has for us this morning. Amen? Yes. Well, we know that our being in Christ is not something that is uh, just a part of our imagination, but when a person is born again, they are made new in Christ. And as believers... What we've learned over the years in pastoring uh, is that we've got to learn from the Word of God how to operate from that position of a new person in Christ. One of the scriptures that helped me so much, and many of you already know my testimony of how God uh, saved me out of a life of drug addiction and prostitution and uh, a life of crime. And when I came to the Lord, I had to learn who I was as a new creature. And one of the scriptures that helped me so much was Second Corinthians chapter 5 yeah. and verse 17 yeah. that says, Therefore, if any man be mm -hmm. in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And that helped me because I needed those old things yeah, to be to passed away. Yeah. yeah. And and all things are new in Christ. And so when that uh, transition for me of coming out of that life that I had lived before, uh, the way that I learned how to live who I am in Christ is I had to find out who I am in Christ. Yeah. And, um, you know, our being in Christ, here is a way that I have... Um, recognized it to be maybe explained when uh, our being in Christ is a real spiritually geographical location, fixed location. a fixed point yeah. it, in the spirit realm. It's not something that is just a figment of an imagination or just not an ideolo it's ideology, just right? Yeah. It is actually where you are in Christ, that you are in Christ. And so over 130 times, there are references in the New Testament in Christ, in him, in whom. Right. All of those identify that change, that transition of what has taken place in us, in Christ. Right. That, that um, supernatural, or you could say spiritual, change of location. And so when we begin to see that it's a fixed reference point, you know, I like to go to the mall. And if, I, if we are traveling and we go to a, a, a new mall, the first thing I want to find is that map that right. tells us where we are. You are here. <laughs> you are here. Yeah. And if we can find on that map where we are, right. then wherever I want to go in that mall, I could say I want to go to the shoe store because I'm not a browser. Right. I'm not the person that wants to just wander around. I am the person that goes in and says I'm on a hunt. A disclaimer, <laughs> unless she's dress shopping and then she's a browser. Go ahead. 
<laughs> well, it's a hunt browsing. and It's a browsing with a hunt mentality because I want to be able to go in specifically. I don't want to go look around at all the knickknacks and stuff if I'm looking for a dress. Right. If I'm looking for shoes, I don't want to go uh, browse mm -hmm. all the sales in the home goods department. Right. So I'll look on the map to find out where I need to go. I need the shoe store. I need the dress store. And from that point, I have a a map that will tell me how to get because it, I could know where those are, but if I don't know where I am right. in the store, then I don't know how to get there. The the beginning of anything is understanding where you're at. Yes. And 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 that's why the Bible says that you have to first recognize when you come to Christ, you have to recognize that you are estranged from God, that you are you are a sinner. And it says from that point, from that location of locating where you're at, you can then begin your journey to find out who you are in Christ. Yes. And after you're born again, your fixed location has changed from spiritual death and being without Christ and no hope in the world to having Christ and being a child of the God of all hope. But it starts with you got to know where you're at. You got to find that map that says you are here. Yeah. And from there, you can determine how to get to where you want to go. Yeah. But if a person, let's say, for instance, that they are believing for a loved one to to be saved, but they don't know where they are. Yeah. Right. And so they're trying to come to God on the basis of the situation. And they're trying to come to God on the basis of how bad it looks. Mm -hmm. And they're coming to God and they're, they're saying, oh, Lord, it, it's so bad. It's, it's, it's awful what's going on in their life. And they're trying to approach God on a basis that doesn't, that's not their location. And I'm speaking out of this from having learned yeah. in my own walk with Over God. The years, yeah. uh, there was a time that one of our children was going through some times that they were making very, very dangerous decisions with their life. Yeah. And I wanted to fix it. Yeah. And so, you know, I had gone to them and tried to counsel them and give them advice and lead them in the way that they should have gone. And they did, had, didn't want anything to do right. with my counsel or your counsel or our advice. And so I was... I was dealing with that situation, trying to deal with it from the position of a mom. And I was saying, Lord, this is my child, and I'm, I'm trying to come to God and deal with this from my emotions, from how it hurt me to see what that child was going through. And at, at some point in my prayer, the Lord directed me, Michelle, you've got to deal with this from the position of who you are in Christ. And that helped me so much yeah. because I, there was no help for me in the emotional no. arena. Yeah. There, yeah. The, our spiritual weapons aren't in the emotional right. arena. Our, our spiritual progress is not out of the mind. It's not out of our feelings. And so whether it's your marriage that you're trying to uh, believe God for, a loved one that you're trying to believe God for, even your health, Whatever thing that you are trying to get God involved in that situation, you're going to have to know who you are and come from that place because it's by covenant that God deals with us. Right. Yeah. It's through that covenant. Right. And so when I was redirected in my praying, in my standing, in my believing, in my confessing, not from my emotions, not from how bad the situation was, but instead from the position of who I am in Christ, I could then take, that's where our authority is. Right. That's where the authority is. So I could deal with the situation. And so if a person doesn't know where they are in Christ. Well, that's where the power is at. <laughs> Yes. The, the Bible says, if the same spirit is in you that raised Christ from the dead, that there's a quickening. That's where the power's at, is knowing who I am in Christ. Yes. It's, it's our, our four-year-old. She understands she's a steel. There, there is a certain amount of uh, authority and power that is possessed there because... We, now, she's very respectful, but when she comes in Daddy's office, she doesn't come in Daddy's office as a visitor. Right. She comes in Daddy's office as a child. She realizes her position. Her position is different. She doesn't go to our home 
and, and, and beg for what she needs or wants or desires. She deals with it from her position of being in the family. Yes. And it's the position of, of who we are in Christ deals with us more receiving and taking what already belongs to us rather than asking God like an outsider or asking God like someone that has no rights or privileges. Paul wrote in the book of Ephesians, and he said, before you were born again, he said, you were without hope, without God, having no hope in the world, strangers from the covenants of promise. Yes. And he said, but now because you believe the gospel, you've been grafted in, you've been brought into the family of God, and you operate from this position of who you are in Christ. Yes, yes. Right? So you've got to let the Word of God identify who you are in Christ. That's You're right. not going to be able to to know your, who you are in Christ without the Word. That's right. You're not going to find it no. just from uh, what somebody else has to say. You've got to let the Word of God be the foundation of your conviction yes. that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm washed in the blood. I'm justified. I'm a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. All things are created new. It, it has to be the Word because the Word is the spiritual light or the spiritual truth that gives us the, in the Spirit, in our heart, that gives us the clarity of who we are well, in Christ. Well, that's what G Jesus said those three things about the Word. He said the Word was life. He said the Word was truth and that the Word was light. Yes. All right? And, and over and over again, Scripture says that. And when you get in the Word... When you talk about if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, all right? When someone reads that verse that has never experienced that, and they believe that what they're reading is true, the first thing God had to do to me, being raised in church my whole life, when I really got a hold of the Word of God, the first thing He had to do was show me that this was truth, absolute truth. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through your word. Your word is truth. Yes. When a person sees that as truth, something happens. Yes. yes. Wait a minute. I'm a new creature. I believe it's the Amplified Bible says, a species of being that never before existed. Yes. Praise now, God. <laughs> that takes a spiritual, that takes faith to grab a hold of that. Yes. Because when you're looking in the mirror, your hair didn't change. Your eye color didn't change. The shape of your face didn't change. But yet the Word says that I am now a species of being that never existed before on this planet and that all of those old things that were in my life are passed away. Yes. And that all things have become new. And then the next verse says, and all things are, are of, of God. God. Yes. <laughs> So everything in my reborn human spirit is of God. God is truly my Father. God is truly not just my Creator. He is my Father. He is where I came from. Yes. I am God inside created, making me God inside minded. And it means if I took a spiritual DNA test, it would come back God positive, God positive because God would be Woo! my father. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. That is something that you can't get to with reasoning. You cannot come to that conclusion okay. with reasoning or with natural thoughts. You have to take the word, which contains God's thoughts, yeah. and you have to let this word uh, be your, your nutrition that you're feeding on this word yeah. and you're allowing the word to set the foundations yeah. and the structure of how you operate from this point on because our new being in Christ, this new person we are in Christ, will not be able to operate by the same food okay. that we were eating yeah. on before and have God results. Well, it's like For us to have the results that the covenant gives us, we've got to feed on covenant food. Well, it's like trying to put diesel fuel in a gas engine. That won't work. We know that won't work. <laughs> and we know that won't work because we had a bus driver one time that was driving a bus for the ministry 
and he was driving a uh, 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 a gas bus, and he put diesel in it. Yes. It doesn't work, <laughs> right? It doesn't work because they're both fuel, but they fuel two different engines. Yes. They have a different combustion system. They have a different operating system. And so when a person's not born again, how are they operating? By what they see, by what they feel, by what is going on around them, by what somebody told them, by the way they were raised. And then when they get born again, they are, they, they are switched over to an operating system that says, I walk by faith and not by sight. I walk by what the Word of God says about me, what the Word of God says about my environment. And it takes a switching over of that system. It does. And if you try to live as the new creature with the fuel from the old system, you'll starve your spirit to death because that's not what it exists on. Right. You know, you can't take a Mac-based application and load it into a, a Windows computer. It won't work. It won't work. Yeah. You can't take the diesel fuel and put it in the gas engine. There, You cannot... You cannot feed your newborn, uh, reborn human spirit on reasoning and the thoughts of the world or the fears of the world or worry or anxiety or, or doubt or unbelief and, and have victory in your life. Right. And that's why when the first thing that, and I tell people this a lot of times, the most important thing you can do with faith is build who you are in Christ. You can use faith for, for material things, yeah. and that's a, there's a place for there's that. You, place, can use, an you can use faith for finances, and you can use faith for health, yeah. and you can use faith for, for the natural things that you need in your life. But the most important thing faith is for, and I'll, I'll take it down to the root, is to know who you are in Christ. That's the exactly righteousness right. which is of faith, Romans chapter 10. That's a phrase in Romans chapter 10, yeah. but it's a foundational phrase. Yeah. It, the righteousness of who you are in Christ comes by knowing the victories that yeah. he accomplished in dying for us on the cross, in, in going into hell and suffering for us, being, and him being raised uh, from death into spiritual life and seated because all of those things are ours too. Yeah. They belong to us they too, do. but it takes us first believing that Jesus did that for us. Yeah. So there's a righteousness that comes by faith. So the most important thing we can do with our faith is establish who we are in Christ. Exactly. Is to build that map so that at any point, you I know, know, if you, I know where I need to be at. You and I, we had to, we had an errand to run, and so we, I put into the GPS on on the map on my phone the location, right. and and I pressed go, and it started telling us uh, step by step how to get where we needed to go. Right. But you know, the first thing it did was it used the GPS to locate where I was because yeah. it couldn't tell me where to go. That's right. Until it found out where I was. That's right. And and a lot of people are are want are seeing a place they want to go but because they don't they first haven't established where they are in Christ yeah. that they are in his righteousness that mm -hmm. they are in relationship with God so that they could enter in to right. the presence of God the throne room to receive in time of need they haven't established that yet right. and so that's going to be necessary to give you direction to tell you how to get out of debt yeah. or to tell you how to get to a strong marriage or to tell you how to get to just fill in the blank wherever it is you're trying to go we've got first got to find out and the gps coordinate for where we are is second corinthians five seventeen. it is and and the thing is is faith for anything springs from that faith of who we are in Christ. Yes. That's what one translation says about the scripture that says we go from faith to faith. Yes. It 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 says it's a faith that springs from faith and goes to more faith. And so yet faith comes by hearing the word of God. And I've said over the years faith for anything comes from hearing the word on that subject. But there's a starting place with everything. If, if, if you're going to do an algebraic equation, if you do it correctly, it's because you had faith in knowing how to first add and then subtract and then multiply and then divide 
There, there, there was addition and subtraction and division and multiplication that came first and fractions and all these other things. Because when you get to that algebraic equation and it says A plus X equals whatever. Yeah, X over Y right? equals and, Q. And you're trying to figure out what is X over Y. They're all numeric equations that are hidden in the multiplication table or whatever. Here's my point. I don't just show up and do an algebraic equation. I have to first of all locate where I started. Yes, yes. Right? Well, 10 times whatever is this, so we put that here and this equation will help me with this. So when I come to a firm understanding, this is who I am in Christ. All right? Then everything else starts clicking. Yes, yes. Right? I can understand how much he loves me, how much he wants to do for me. Yes, how, yes. And, and understand the concepts of blessing. A lot of people get born again and they need everything. And, and at times they're, they're motivated by a need. But the biggest need is, wait a minute. He said, when you get all of these elementary things, and I say elementary, they're vast. They're huge. Who we are in Christ there is not a more phenomenal revelation. You could spend the rest of your life mining the depth of the revelation, but yet it is so elementary. It is the elementary revelation to everything else. Yeah, or you could say fundamental. Fundamental, yes. It's it's the 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 base that you build the next levels on. Yeah. If you don't know who you are in Christ, like you said, how can you understand your, your re being a recipient of the blessing? How can you understand your authority in Jesus' name? How can you understand any of the components that come in the covenant if you don't understand our being in Christ, to our be being. in Christ, it's yeah. and it's a it's a being. It's not not just a position, but it's it's where my life is originating yes. from. And in the next week, we're going to talk a little bit about the vine we'll and the get branches. To our first for next week, right? <laughs> well, we got we we got to our base. We got our GPS coordinate. Second Corinthians chapter. Uh, five, uh, verse 17. Verse 17. That's, That's right. our GPS coordinate. That's right. You know, when we talk about these things of who we are in Christ and, and what Christ has done for us, uh, I realize that by and large, a lot of the uh, individuals that watch us and watch our program, you may be born again, you may uh, uh, be a church member, but here's something else that I know is that you may be watching and you may not be fully aware of who you are in Christ. Well, the solution to that is, number one, get in the Word of God. But I want to lead you in a prayer because I believe that you making this a prayer is going to be so crucial in what you're believing God for. Just say this with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to show me who I am in Christ. Help me to see from my heart who you are in Christ Jesus, who I am in Christ Jesus. And as I see it, I'll follow through with it. Yes. I'll believe it, and I'll walk it out in Jesus' name. You know, I believe that when you pray that kind of prayer, God hears it. And the Bible says those that hunger and thirst after righteousness yes. will be filled they will be filled with the things of God. And so we're so grateful that you chose to join us today. You know, we want to thank all of our partners, all of our friends that help make this program possible yes. uh, in all over the state of Arkansas, all over uh, the cities in the Boot Hill of Missouri, uh, 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 up into uh, uh, southern Tennessee. We're so grateful for all of your prayers all of your financial support. We're so blessed that you would want to be a part of the Faith Builders broadcast. And here's what we believe about you. We believe that God has placed within you 
the seeds of greatness to do exactly what he's called you to do. Yes. And we believe that as you build your faith and frame your world by the word of God, that victory will be the result. Thank you for joining us. We can't wait to see you next week as we continue with this series on our being in Christ and who you are in Christ. When a person is born again, they aren't remodeled. They are recreated in Christ Jesus. Their new life is so dramatically different. There is no way to understand the fullness of who they are what belongs to them, or what they can do without the help of God's Word. To properly identify the position of righteousness with our Heavenly Father, we need the help of God's Word. To understand what it means to be redeemed from the past, from sickness, from lack, and from the curse operating in this world, we need to know what the Word says. In my newest book, Redeemed and Righteous by Nature, we have that scriptural emphasis You're going to discover to be in Christ is not just a figure of speech. It is an actual geographical location in the spirit. The life that is in Christ Jesus is the same life operating in you. Jesus is the vine and you are the branch. That righteousness is not something you have. It's who you are in Christ. How to receive from God. How to confront the enemy from this place in Christ. And so much more. I really believe this book is going to bring great understanding to anyone who is hungry to strengthen themselves and who they are in Christ. Make sure to get your copy today. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can watch live streams or watch messages again to build your faith anytime you desire with trusted teaching from pastors Philip and Michelle Still as well as guest ministers and special events on our YouTube channel. Subscribe today and be ready to hear what God has for you. This is Pastor Philip Still and I want to invite you out to Little Rock's new Word of Faith Church, Faith Builders Church right here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Our address is 10500 Markham. We have services Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Sunday nights at 6 p.m., and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., our hour of power. If you're hungry for the moving of the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of healing, the working of miracles, if you're hungry for the moving of the Holy Ghost, then we're the church for you. We value the Word of God and believe that the Word of God is the answer to all of your problems. We have a whole slate of services that are available for your family. We have nursery ministry, children's ministry, and youth ministry, all geared towards building your faith and framing your world by the Word of God. I'd really love to see you. Come and see us. And until then, God bless you. Thank you for your partnership. We have many ways that you can connect with us through your generous giving or prayers. Not only will your seed into this ministry help spread the gospel, it will produce a harvest in your own life. You can sow online, by mail, or by phone. Thank you for your faithful partnership.